Hello LinkedIn land and welcome back to today Thursday's video on my GDPR top tip series. Today is another request from David McElroy to deal with the subject of working at home. Um, working at home is a very, very, very modern, very popular thing to do now. And uh, there are people who lengthen bread to the company that either do the, uh, the occasional day at working from home, work from home permanently, full time, or combinations of all of the above. There's also the odd bit that, you know, I can't come in today, can I just work from home? All of that sort of thing that all fits in together. And being flexible with your workforce, being flexible with your working arrangements gets the best out of staff. So it's to be positively encouraged. With that said, if you're going to encourage it, you need to have done your homework first to make sure that you as a data controller or the data processor are making sure that you've taken all appropriate steps as the law requires to safeguard any personal data that they may be using, as well as all the other basic, simple infosex type stuff that you need to do about cybersecurity for um, various other things. Because we get focused in on the personal data, that's what I do as a, as a data protection specialist. But again, it, there's all the other cyber security parts of it fit into it. So what we're going to talk about first. Um, first of all, you need to decide if they are going to work at home, do they actually need to work on any personal data at home? And um, maybe they're all day, every day, every piece of work they do involves personal data and you're just going to have to accept it. But for some people, um, it can be part of their job, you know, a couple of hours a day and the rest of it, they're not dealing with it or so on and so forth. So if you could juggle it around, so on the day, they, they take maybe one day out, a week out of the office um, for childcare reasons or whatever. But that's what they're doing. Can you juggle the work schedule around on that day so they don't actually have to access any personal data? Again, if you don't have to access it remotely, you automatically take away all of the risk that goes along with it because it's just not there. And again, it's just about a different way of thinking, different way of organizing your day, and sometimes you can just make the whole problem go away. If it's not, and they're gonna definitely need to have access to personal data to be able to be effective when they're working from home, back to what I love, the famous risk assessment, you need to then look into the, into the situation, look at what they're handling and make sure that the risks of them taking it home and working on it remotely have been adequately mitigated so that they, they, um, the benefits are worth it. If you can't adequately mitigate them, you just don't do it, whether, whether it's com convenient or helpful, useful, whatever, it just needs to be considered as a no-no. Um, so then you've got, you've, got, you've got that, you've got your risk assessment, you've thought about things. Um, you need to have a chat with your member of staff. You need to, at the minimum, have some sort of policy or procedure or protocol for how it's going to be handled, how it's going to be done, and that needs to reinforce all the good principles of the Data Protection Act 2018 with regards to the security, the technical measures, etc. So that means when you're working at home, you're not working at home in the, on, on the laptop where everybody can see what you're doing. Just because you're with friends and family, they've got no right to see what's going on with your work. So you need to encourage people to find a quiet space to work away from everything else that's going on where possible. Again, you need to think about how they're actually going to physically do this work what tends to happen with a lot of small businesses, you take work home. If you're lucky enough to have a laptop built from work, that goes home with you and you work away on that, and then it comes back in again, and that's usually not too, not too bad. What the real dangers come in when you start emailing stuff from home, back via your private email account, back to home, you open up at home, you work on it on your machine, you finish it, you then email it back, to, back into work again. If that's how you're dealing with personal data, it is a no-no of epic proportions it will bite you at some stage in the future when it all goes wrong. It just is not the way to do business. If you're going to email personal data in and out of your organization, you need to have some sort of secure network, some sort of secure uh, VPN, or some sort of secure email client to enable it to be passed backwards and forwards. Again, there's lots of technical solutions out there that you can speak to the cyber people about and they can they can help you out with that. Again, I'm focusing on the, on the general day-to-day top tips side of things. So what else can we think about? Um, your home is the extension of your workplace. So if you're working at that home, you need to be thinking about the same sort of good data protection principles that you practice at work, that you practice at home. And hopefully everybody's adhering to those kind of clear desk policies, lock it or lose it, all those kind of things. And you just have to apply that at home. If you have the personal data when you bring it home from work, or, you know, in physical form or something like that on a pen drive or something, Again, I, I mentioned in one of my other videos about count it out, count it in. That's just the sort of things you need to do. Just make sure you haven't lost it on transit. Then when you're at home, you need to have, if you're using your own machine, it needs to have good up-to-date antivirus software on it. 
to regularly be scanning it and keeping keeping it up to date and all the rest of it. Again, if you want the member of staff to work from home uh, and you want them to do the work from home, you can't expect them to pay for their own antivirus and software system. It's all part of the cost that goes in with allowing the remote working. You have to properly enable them with all the technical steps so they can do it properly. If they're cutting corners, it's because you haven't enabled the process that allows them to do their job properly. And that's what you see when people circumvent systems all the time. It's because the system you've put in place is just simply unworkable. Um, and the final thing just to think about to remember is that you will always be in charge of that data, no matter what happens with the person that takes it away. If you're the data controller, it's always going to be your data. You can't just point your finger at, finger at the member of staff and blame everything on them. If they have failed to follow your policies, procedures, and all your guidance and just ignored it, fair enough. You might have a bit of a defense, but you didn't give them the accurate guidance in the first place. You're up, you're up the uh, proverbial creek without a paddle. So that was it. That's just my sort of five, six minute thoughts on um, working at home for today, Thursday. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. This is my first video with subtitles. Let me know if that helps. If that's not picked up any, any more extra viewers, uh, let me know if you love listening to my Scottish tones. I'm glad to have any sort of, sort of um, um, feedback on the videos. Speak to you all soon. Bye.